Hey everybody, Brandon Villarolo here for Tech Republic, and today I want to go over a few ways you can protect your Zoom meetings from Zoom bombers. So this is a new trend going around with the uptick in Zoom users due to more people working from home. Um, basically, a Zoom bomber is someone who's crashing a meeting, uh, getting control of video screens and sharing screens, you know, that are not appropriate to be seeing at work, or you know, yelling obscenities into uh, into microphones, basically ruining everyone's time. Whether they're trying to collaborate for work. Um, teach other people something, hold a lecture, you know, or, or just talk to family. So basically these are internet trolls, um, and like all internet trolls, there are ways to stop them. Um, so in this case, there are three things you can do when you're scheduling a meeting. Go over here, click on schedule, and you'll see uh, this pops up right here. Okay, first thing you want to make sure you do is generate an automatic meeting ID. Um, your personal meeting ID is tied to your account, so anyone who knows that can then bomb any call you're on. As long as you're using your personal ID, they can keep getting into those calls or at least keep finding them and knowing they're going on if they have that ID. If you're generating one automatically, unless your invitation is getting uh, posted publicly or someone you know cracks someone's email, um, that ID will only be used once and you know no one's gonna be able to get a hold of it unless they just brute force guess it. Second, you wanna make sure you have a password uh, for the meeting. Um, you can enable this by default to just turn on whenever you schedule a meeting. You don't have that checkbox checked. Uh, if you're worried that the password is going to get shared or, or that a meeting invitation will get intercepted, it's not a bad idea to turn this off when you first schedule the meeting. Uh, when a Zoom invitation goes out to invitees, they're going to see, um, you know, they're going to see the password and the meeting ID in there. So if you save it without a password and schedule it and then go back in after you're done, edit the meeting to add a password, uh, you know, save it once you've added a password, and then you can either uh, make sure you don't send an email out to update people of that change. Just make sure you contact them either in a separate email or via a different communication channel to tell them what the password is, and that way those two, the meeting ID and the password are never in the same place. You can also go down here, make sure participant video is off. And then in advanced options, you want to make sure you enable the waiting room. Okay, so what this does is basically anytime someone joins the call, they're placed in a queue uh, and you're notified as the meeting host that someone wants to join the meeting. And so you get to basically, you know, grant every person in that meeting individual permission to be there. You know, still make sure their video's off and make sure that uh, they're not able to speak necessarily. But that waiting room will go a long way to making sure that no one who's not supposed to be there is getting in. If you see someone in there you don't recognize, just straight up deny them entry or make sure you get clarification from them on a different communication channel if you're not sure who it is. Okay, so let's say your meeting's scheduled and it's time to start it. Go into the meeting like this, and there's two other methods you can use to control who can talk and show things on the screen. So go over here to Manage Participants, and then this menu will pop up on the right side of your screen. Uh, and you can see down here on the bottom, you've got controls for mute all or unmute all. So you can make sure that everyone in your call is unable to speak. You can also go to more and then make sure that participants are muted on entry. Uh, so if you make sure this box is checked, you'll see you'll get this pop up. All new participants are muted and then uncheck this box to allow them to unmute themselves. And so that way now anyone who joins this call is going to be muted and they're going to be unable to unmute themselves. So I'm the, I've am the i got to specifically grant them permission as the meeting host to speak. They can't speak otherwise. Uh, last thing you want to do is you want to go down to the screen share option. And Zoom bombing is, you know, a lot of it's visual. People are sharing pornography um, on, on spaces that it shouldn't be. And they're doing that by sharing their screen. Um, so you can block people from sharing their screen if you go to that. Click on the arrow next to share screen and then click on advanced sharing options. And from there, tile that only the host can share. So you or anyone you grant permission to are the only people who can share their screens. Confirm that and you should be all set. So if you've turned off video uh, in the invite screen, you're not using a default, uh, your default meeting ID, you're requiring a password, you're using the waiting room, you're changing the way screen sharing is so it can only be you and you're muting everyone when they come in the room and you're not giving them the option to unmute themselves. You've basically closed all the channels that someone has to Zoom bomb your meeting. So you should be a lot safer, and hopefully your meetings will go a little more smoothly in the future. For Tech Republic, I'm Brandon Villarolo. Be sure to tune in to Tech Republic for more tips and tricks just like this one.